Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Five years ago in 2016, Hughes and Kettner changed the game. The Grandmeister 40 Deluxe launched late in the year, if memory serves correctly, and it was a masterpiece. H&K's Deluxe tube heads were the clearest examples to date of combining modern technology with the natural sound of tube tone that us guitarists love. This Grandmeister Deluxe was unlike anything else that came before it. Signature Hughes and Kettner look and high fidelity sound with the addition of a built-in effect suite, a boost that's individually voiced for each of the four channels, an adjustable noise gate, tube safety control, power soak, and even the ability to run the amp without a speaker using cabinet emulation and XLR DI out. On top of that, everything programmable and controllable using MIDI. All of that sounds amazing, and undoubtedly in 2016, that was a game changer. But now, five years later, it's 2021, is this amp still relevant? Let's take a closer look. All right, so let's run through some specs and some sound samples. I'm not gonna try and recreate every single thing this amp can do because that might take literally forever. I'll just go through some of my favorite settings that I've found so far. This is a 40 watt all tube amp, which you can clearly see through the front plexiglass panel. I love that on Hughes and Kettner tube heads. We've got four EL84 tubes in the power section while the preamp section has three 12AX7s. Four channels, there's clean. There's crunch. There's lead. And then there's ultra. So it may be a lunchbox head, but this amp covers the full gamut of sound. There's even a built-in boost, and just like with the Triamp, it's not universal. It's been voiced to affect the frequencies differently depending on the channel you're using it on.
very useful. It's literally a one button solution to get you even more out of each channel at optimum settings. Built-in noise gate as well, which is really useful. It's transparent, the sensitivity is adjustable on the back panel. Does he want to work a system to build wealth or does he want to continue to be a freaking child? It's really good, really useful. There's really no reason not to use it. So on the front panel, you've got a global master, then power amp EQ in presence and resonance controls, preamp EQ in your treble, mid, and bass, then your channel controls with volume and gain. Pretty standard amp stuff. I guess one thing that is non-standard is a dedicated knob that controls the digital spring reverb, which works great with the clean channel. So you're already getting a ton out of this amp, but go ahead and hit the effects access button. It opens up an entire new dimension with the Grandmeister. So your three knobs on the left side stop being your treble mid and bass and instead become your delay controls. So your, your delay level, your feedback and your delay time. <laughs> Independent to that, your two knobs to the right give you control over modulation effects. The letter C stands for chorus. The letter F stands for flanger. Letter P stands for phaser. And the letter T stands for tremolo. can't stack your modulation effects. You can only use them one at a time. Though, to be fair, I would never find myself using more than one of these at a time anyways. So that means though, you can still stack adjustable reverb, adjustable delay, and an adjustable modulation effect all at the same time. There's also an effects loop that is switchable, which is nice if you'd prefer to run pedals through it instead of using the onboard effects. And by the way, everything I've just been talking about, the presence, resonance, modulation effects, reverb, delay, preamp EQ, gain, boost, wattage, effects loop, it's all MIDI controllable. The only thing that isn't is the master volume, but like the channel volume is, so it doesn't really matter. But the MIDI control factor, what that means if you aren't aware is you can save all your favorite settings as presets. So you can go from a pristine clean with a slight amount of reverb and chorus straight to a high gain lead, absolutely drenched in delay, straight to a low gain crunch flanger sound or whatever with just a tap of a button. Being able to save all those settings for easy recall is massive. Like imagine if you had to go through the effects access button every time, it's just not convenient. The MIDI control using the foot switch makes all the functionality easily accessible, and I'd argue actually usable in a live context. Speaking of context though, moving on to the back panel, the Grandmeister gives you a ton of options depending on the situation you find yourself in. Practicing at home in an apartment, use the power soak feature to drop the wattage down to something the neighbors are happy with. Inspiration strikes at three in the morning and you need to record silently, use the Redbox DI out straight into your interface without any speaker attached. You can even use that to run directly from the amp into a PA for gigs without the need for a speaker cab. I'm not gonna lie though, there are a number of built-in cab sim options. Wasn't huge into any of them though. So 
So I ended up using the IRs I normally use through software on my computer. The thing is already pretty loud, but even so, there's a dedicated out to run the Grandmeister into an external power amp should the situation call for it. And the last thing on the back panel we should talk about is the tube safety control. This essentially monitors the power tubes and will let you know if any of the four EL84s are acting up. Again, another very useful feature. <laughs> Just a few final thoughts. Let's go back to the question posed at the beginning of the video. The Grandmeister 40 Deluxe was a game changer in 2016. Is it still relevant in 2021? In my opinion, absolutely yes. What you're getting with the Grandmeister Deluxe is a super solid all around amp. You're getting so much in one box, a versatile range of tube tones with four channels, built in effects, internal load box, noise gate, anything you need it for, any style, any gig, you can be confident that this is gonna do a good job. And even five years after its launch, there really isn't any other tube head, lunchbox or not, that can boast as comprehensive a feature list as the Grandmeister Deluxe. Overall, this amp kicks ass, and the Hughes and Kettner front panels, you can't beat it. Now, it's not completely perfect, though. One feature that is showing its age is the Redbox DI. To be honest, I'm not a fan of any of the built-in cab sims. IRs and cab sims are one area that's made massive leaps since this amp launched. In the age where two notes integration is becoming more common, this would really benefit from the ability to load your own custom IRs, so you can really take your sounds anywhere. That way you could really have your entire rig in just one box. Now, while you can't have it on the amp itself, H&K had the foresight to give you the option to disable the cab sim and have the raw amp go directly into your interface and then you can use custom IRs with software. And I guess you can pair it with a Torpedo Captor X or something for a portable solution. Then the ventilation is a bit of a head scratcher. Tubes generate a lot of heat, heat rises, and there's no top vent. So the top of the amp, which is metal, gets insanely hot. It acts as a heat sink it dissipates the heat into the room, which is good for the amp. There is a vent on the back, but you would have thought a top vent might have been useful too. In terms of metal tone, which is my focus, it does a very decent job. It's not the best Hughes and Kettner lunchbox head for it though. I actually prefer the Tube Meister. It doesn't have nearly as many features. It doesn't even have a built-in noise gate, which is kind of insane. But the lead channel is voiced closer to the Triant Mark III, which is like my dream amp and one of my favorite amps of all time. It's got a more natural, less compressed metal tone. For what it's worth, Wendell, my luthier, the guy that brought back the 74 Les Paul Custom, says that the Grandmeister gets very close to the H&K Duotone, which was his main amp for a while, and he loves it. So don't think of them as the same amp, one with effects, one without. They both have that signature Hughes and Kettner high fidelity quality to the tone, but the sounds aren't identical. Just my opinion, that's the better metal amp, this one is better overall as an all-rounder. So I definitely recommend you try them both out if possible if you're considering these. Another area that's definitely been left behind is the app. The idea is that you're able to control your settings and presets from an iPad. Now, I don't have an iPad, but even if I did, it wouldn't matter because you can't even download it anymore from the App Store and apparently there were compatibility issues with the current version of iOS anyways. This is the problem with software integration. There really needs to be commitment because things get updated all the time and there's nothing that makes your product seem old like advertising clearly outdated software. Now, I do love how everything can be controlled from the front panel, even if it's not the most intuitive solution at first. You do get used to it quickly. The experience is much better with the Hughes and Kettner MIDI board though. You can select channels, save and recall your favorite presets on the fly or put it into stopbox mode and activate your modulation effect your delay and your boost independently. Very easy to use. It is 200 bucks. Remember, it's not a regular foot switch. It's much more than that and it adds a lot to the experience. But overall, I am a big, big fan of this amp. It sounds great and it can do so, so much. You can take it anywhere. It even comes with a nice little traveling bag for just that purpose. And it looks super cool. So that makes you super cool. Everyone knows that's how that works. <laughs> I'm just being an idiot. It is a great amp. The fact that it looks fucking awesome is just a most excellent bonus. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. Of course, just my opinions. Always want to know what you think in the comments. Subscribe, notification bell, you know the drill. Big thanks to Hughes and Kettner for sending this out for us to check out together. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.